Travel west from Midtown Manhattan through the Lincoln Tunnel to the Jersey side. It's MetLife Stadium here in East Rutherford. Here's Cade York to start the ball game. And off we go from MetLife Stadium. And it'll be brought down past the 25. Decent field position to start this drop. Throwing on the first play is Jones. And that one knocked away. It's incomplete. They just rushed that decision just a little bit downfield. I mean, it's one thing to trust your guy to make a play in tight coverage. We see quarterbacks do that all the time. But I think if he was a little bit more patient in his progression, there was an easier throw out there that wouldn't make him have to throw such a tight window ball and put his receiver in a tight spot. Toward the middle of the field that time, but incomplete. Really nice job there by the defense defending the middle of the field. That is the most valuable real estate on the field. They know every single offense is trying to attack the defense between the hashes. So give credit. They took away all the throwing lanes, and that ball falls incomplete. Throwing is Jones on third down. They go sideline, and he stays in bounds. Got the feet down in time. It's a first down. That one, good for 15, and a first down. I think it's so critical to start the game fast. I mean, you hear every coach and player harp on it in their press interviews and in their conferences. It's something that everybody stresses, but it's easier said than done. So I think for them to come out and face an early third down and be able to pick up a first and extend this possession, I think it goes a long way towards everybody on that sideline and in that huddle, just taking a deep breath. That's a gain of 16. This offense is humming. A first down. Jones. Oh, the blitz gets there quickly, and down he goes. That is Jonathan Allen, the big defensive tackle, in there for the sack. And now we're seeing the game kind of go back and forth. Each team trading blows, trying to establish control over the other. Nice chunk play on the previous play. The defense responds back with a sack. And we're going to see which team can establish a little bit more of this control as the game unfolds. A oh, strong running there. He brings this down inside the 25. It's definitely nice to have one of those bruising, punishing backs to kind of help wear down the defense. But I'll tell you what, you can give me a flat-out electric runner like this guy any day of the week. He can turn on those jets, get in that high gear, and he is gone. I fumbled the football, and it's recovered by one of his teammates. Sometimes these games in the NFL, Mike, they get decided by simply how the ball bounces. I mean, how often do we see a quarterback in the pocket get strip sack, and that ball ends up going the other direction? Fortunately for them, they can regroup, get back in the huddle, and live another day. Ball falls into the hands of his own guy, and they'll see if they can dodge this bullet. Inside the 10, it is caught. And they're going to get this all the way down inside the 5. Talk about a thing of beauty. Mike, did you see how many tight ends were on the field on that last play? They call it 13 personnel because there's one running back, three tight ends, one wide receiver. So everybody on defense is thinking run. They catch them off guard a little with the pass. And they take advantage of it with a big gain downfield. That play may have taken a little bit too long to develop. It's no gain. He's back at the four-yard line. Coming off that edge, Mike, you have to quickly determine, is this a pass or is it a run? And once he realized it was a run, he's able to shed his blocker, make the play, no gain. Again, it'll be Singletary. And this time, he's in. Devin Singletary. Touchdown, Giants. A terrific way to start this one. Not only a touchdown, but a nice... Long march down the field makes it a long walk back to the bench for the defense. Mike, that's about as good as you can imagine starting a game offensively. To be able to sustain that many plays 
and be able to cap it off with a touchdown. That is a dream start for this offense. Seven nothing is our score as this kick is sent into the air. From the six, here comes a return. Now an opening past the 30. A penalty marker is down as he gets up close to the 35, but this one might be coming back a bit. So they come to the line for first down and 10. The drive starts with a carry by Eckler. And this play's going nowhere, taken down behind the line. A great way for this defense to get on the field and get started. I can tell you firsthand, as an offensive guy, we never loved playing in the rain. I always felt like the defense had the advantage. They know it wasn't going to be much of a passing attack. Hard to handle the ball, a lot of turnovers. So they've got to have a lot of early focus offensively and try to get something on track. That's caught downfield. McLaurin brings it in. A pickup there of 19 yards. Good for a commander's first down. So you come back out here after watching the opposing team score first, and what you want to do is you got to establish a little early rhythm and get the drive started. Every offensive coordinator has drive starters, meaning it's a completion. It's a run play that we feel great about. It's a screen. Get a little positive energy into that huddle, and what hopefully starts out good ends with you being able to get some points of your own. So, from the 36, it is first and 10. Running right up the gut, it's Eckler. And he'll plow forward for a gain of four yards. Here's second and six. Operating from the gun, it's Daniels. And he'll be taken down. The gain is six, and it's a new set of downs. He picked up the first down. We see this week in and week out, Mike. These running backs in today's game, they really have the skill set of a wide receiver so if you're going to guard him one-on-one -on -one, and you know the offense is going to use him in the passing game you better have that guy you better have that matchup guy that you're confident to put on him and say okay you're going to go out there in space and defend a receiver like this and after plays like that i'm not sure how much more man coverage they can afford to play the receiver thought he had a nice soft spot in that zone coverage and he settles down to give a nice target to the quarterback but the defense had eyes on him the entire time. Secure rally tackle prevents that from turning into a big play. On the give, it's Eckler. And it doesn't appear that he got to that first down marker. They'll only give him a yard, so it'll set up third down. They'll try and run for the first with Eckler. That's a heck of a stop by this defense early in this game, Mike, and it sets up a decision for the offense. How aggressive do you want to be? You might be a little too far away to attempt a realistic field goal, but you might be a little too close to get anything out of the punt unit. I think I'm keeping the offense on. I'm trying to extend this drive, and I'm being aggressive here early. Thank you. 
The drive begins at the 20. Here's first and 10. Shotgun now for Jones. Catch made right side. It's Johnson. That one good for a dozen. And a very... And I believe the referee was buzzed by the replay officials indicating let's get a closer look at this. They trigger this automatically in the last two minutes of the half. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Working from the gun, it's Jones. That's to Robinson. He's got it. And he's going to be out of bounds. And that will take us to the two-minute warning. Here's a second and six. From the gun, it's Jones. And he's got it! And he will go all the way. Malik Neighbors. Touchdown, New York. A beautiful combination in the air there. The pass downfield and bringing it the rest of the way into the end zone for the touchdown. And it's really just a great route, Mike, and then a beautiful throw. The accuracy of the throw is what allowed the receiver not only to secure the catch, but then be able to turn it up and finish the play and find himself in the end zone. Both teams ready to go once more as the kick's away. This taken around the 11. A good return as he takes it across the 30. The commander's offense ready to take over for their second possession. They're staring at a two-touchdown deficit. 14-0 the score as the offense tries to regroup and get going with first and 10. Working out of the gun, it's Daniels. And he'll be taken down rather swiftly after a gain of just three. This is one of those throws where you're hoping you do most of the damage after the catch, but give credit to the defense. Once that ball was caught, they were on him quickly, and there was nowhere for him to go after the catch. On second down, it's Daniels. To the sideline, and what a catch, and what a great job to keep the feet alive. Inbounds as good as you can do it. A nice throw by the rookie from LSU, and he's got his team a first down. And this is why most teams, Mike, decide to take the ball first after the halftime break, because they want to be able to control this middle four. At the end of the first half, you can use your timeouts, you can use some strategy to steal an extra possession, if they're able now to go down and come away with points, they'll have a chance to double it up again right after the halftime break. They'll come up here first and ten. They'll keep it in the air. Here's Daniels. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. Up until that incompletion, they've done a really nice job on this drive, Mike, picking up fresh sets of downs. And typically, throwing the ball on first down is a great way to do it. It's actually the easiest down in football to operate in. But now they find themselves in second and 10. Do you keep it in the air and try to get the first down here? Or is the idea to just make third down manageable and take your chances picking up a key third down? It's a gain of 13, and it's first and goal. 
Man, they're just running this two-minute drill to complete perfection. It's such a point of emphasis of every offense, Mike. These end-of-half scenarios to come away stealing points make a big impact on the outcome of the game. And, and he'll take it on in. Luke McCaffrey, touchdown commander. But you think back to their first possession of this game, Mike, it resulted in a punt. Not exactly the fast start the coaches told us was so important as this game. And I believe the referee was buzzed by the replay officials indicating let's get a closer look at this. They trigger this automatically in the last two minutes of the half. On now, Cade York for the point after. It's up and through. And the Commanders are on the board. It's now 14-7. to seven. They didn't leave much time on the clock to put together a drive here at the end of the first half. And the kickoff's coming their way. On the return, it is Tyrone Tracy. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. The Giants' offense going to get it one final time in this first half. They lead by a touchdown as this drive begins with first and ten. Here's Jones to throw. The pressure gets there, and down he goes back inside the 20-yard line. So we've reached halftime here in Jersey with the Giants on top as we get you down to Florida, Orlando specifically, where the coach is Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. The rain not letting up. It continues to be a factor here as we get back underway in the second half. And he'll work this one past the 25 to right about the 28-yard line. The commander's offense looking to get back to work as we begin this third quarter. They trail here by a touchdown as this drive will start with a first down. Daniels now going to look to throw. That one complete to Brown. And he's going to be brought down up past the 45. Every once in a while, it just comes down to you need somebody in the huddle to just make a play. And it wasn't a whole lot fancy here. The quarterback just dumps the ball down a quick underneath completion. And then really, it's the yards after catch that did the rest. And that's what it takes. You're not always going to have the perfect play. You're not always going to dial up the perfect play against the perfect look. Sometimes players need to make plays. And that was a good one there. Here's a second and three forthcoming. On play action, Daniels. He's got his tight end. There's Ertz. And that's a first down. It will be a gain of eight. There's no more efficient play in the NFL, Mike, than the play action passing game. And you can see here why. You make the defense have to honor both the run and the pass. And... He's able to pick up a nice gain to his tight end. Eckler now on first and ten. And he'll drive this one forward down to the 36. Kayvon Thibodeau with the stop.
Throwing on second down. Daniels. And they bring him down inside the 25-yard line. Not a whole lot complicated about this play, Mike. That was understanding where the holes of the defense were. Remember, in this zone coverage, you got to find green grass. Get past the first down marker, be friendly to the quarterback, and then the ball has to be out on time before those zone defenders can react to the receiver. That's exactly how it played out here. You can drop all the fancy plays you want, but when the quarterback and the receiver see it through the same set of eyes, it's virtually impossible to stop. It's not the big play they were hoping for, but first down efficiency, staying ahead of the chains, is what every offense is trying to find, and it brings up a manageable second down. Daniels to throw on second down. And that's a first down. It will be a gain of eight. You see the first down pickup there by Luke McCaffrey, and certainly a name a lot of NFL fans are going to recognize. Obviously the son of Ed McCaffrey, the brother of Christian. And his ability to really work in traffic, make difficult, contested catches, he's going to have to earn some of these opportunities he had 11 games with at least one receiving touchdown. That led all college football last year at Rice. I think this is a young player that's going to surprise a lot. To the goal line and in. Luke McCaffrey. Touchdown, Washington. That is second touchdown of the afternoon. Mike, we used to have a saying that it was the responsibility of the receiver to run the route through the eyes of the quarterback. And I think this is a great example here. Two guys clearly on the same page. Quarterback expected his target to be in a certain place at a certain time. He's there, balls delivered accurately. He's able to pick up the rest with his legs and that's a big time connection for the touchdown. We are all square, 14 apiece the score, as this one's away. Tracy now to return it. He'll get this up to the 28-yard line. Nice place for the drive to start. The Giants offense trotting back out for their first involvement of this second half. This one, everything we could have hoped for to this point. All even at 14, they'll start this drive with first down. Back to throw is Jones. Now a short one caught by the tight end, Johnson. And he's going to get this one out to the 43-yard line. Just seems like every year, Mike, the tight end position just continues to grow within the passing game and establishes a bigger and bigger role. And listen, I know I'm biased, but if you want to have a good passing game, you better have a good tight end. Jones now on first down. Right back to Johnson. He's got it again. And he'll be brought down on what will be the final act here in this third quarter. Here's second and two. He'll keep it on the ground. And it doesn't appear that he got to that first down marker. They'll only give him a yard, so it'll set up third down. They'll stick to the ground. Possibly the play of the game right here. It is fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Singletary. And he's going to have the Giants first down as they get four on fourth and inches. This play should always end up converting a fourth down, especially at this distance. 
but you can't tell me there weren't some nerves on that sideline as they sent that play in to snap it. But fortunately, nothing to worry about. The offense gets it done. They'll run. And nothing on that one. Back to the line of scrimmage. And that is it. Well, this has been the story of the entire game, Mike, is just how well this defense has played, particularly against the run. There has been nowhere to operate for this offense, and it continued here on this last play. We'll try again. It's second and ten. On play action, it's Jones. And he's going to slide to a stop and avoid the contact. But since he started there, he's still shy of the first down. Take a look at his eyes. You can see the quarterback clearly going through all of his progressions, and he's quick to realize there's nowhere to go with this ball. He makes the right decision and gets out of there, picks up some good yardage, and gets down on the ground. Jones looking to throw on third and two. And he'll be taken down as the clock ticks towards two minutes to play. It's a gain of 10 yards. That's good for a Giants first down. Singletary, and he's going to be taken down, and that will take us to the two-minute warning. They'll come up for second and nine. Now, Singletary. Open space inside the 10. And he's going to take this all the way home. Devin Singletary. Touchdown, New York. His second TD of the game. And this one gives his team the lead. When you start talking about the qualities of a top tier back in the NFL, Mike, we all talk about size, speed, the ability to keep your feet, the ability to have balance at contact. But the part we don't talk enough about is patience, understanding the blocking scheme, the timing, when to hit the hole, as much as what hole to hit. And I think you get a great example of what that looks like when it all comes together. He takes advantage of the scheme, and next thing you know, he hits his head on the goalpost. So the lead is seven now. Here in this fourth quarter, the tie has been broken. Let's see what happens on this kickoff. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. The commander's offense about ready to take over once more. They'll start it here with a first and ten. They'll drop to throw. Got his receiver on the in-cut. He's got it. And he's going to be brought down up past the 45. Here comes the Washington offense now. They get set to take over. They'll begin with terrific starting field position. It gets going with first and 10. Now Daniels. Now they'll set up the screen to Eckler. You see so many teams wait till third down to execute their screen game, but I like in this case the play caller changes things up. He uses the screen game on first down, which will have an effect on this pass rush going forward. How aggressive do they want to get after the quarterback? Because they got that screen play still in the back of their head. From the shotgun, it's Daniels. That's caught by Eckler. And he'll be taken down after a gain of three, but that is good enough for a first down. Receiver just finds himself in a really nice groove, and there's these weird times in the game, Mike, where it just seems like every ball comes your way, every play they call you're wide open, and you just find yourself in one of those grooves that athletes talk about. So they got to continue to ride the hot hand because 
right now in that field, there's no mistake in who it is. All right, so this is why you get paid the big bucks. These are the possessions as a quarterback you need to deliver for your team. Everybody talks about two-minute. Everybody drills it every single week. But when it comes down to this moment in the game, your quarterback needs to be on point. And after that first down incompletion, it just makes things that much harder. Throwing over the middle, this one is complete. And they'll take this down inside the 35. Final minute, one timeout remaining, and it's first and ten. Daniels going to throw again. And the rush gets there. Down he goes. Now the Commanders will use their third and final timeout. And it comes with 36 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. The defensive coaches, they preached all week, Mike. They have to have relentless pursuit of this quarterback when he tries to extend the play. So often it results in a great play for the offense in a big pickup. This time, because of that pursuit, it leads to a big loss. Operating from the gun, it's Daniels. He'll drop this down for Eckler. And they'll hold him to a gain of just a couple and sets up third down. So often for a defense defending the passing game, the most difficult guy to account for is the running back out of the backfield. So a really nice job here bringing him down before he has a chance to pick up any yards after the catch. That'll be incomplete. And now we are down to likely just one more play. This is one of those situations that plays directly into the hands of the defense because think, Mike, they know this offense has to be one-dimensional. This has to be a pass. So what do they do? They bring in extra defensive backs. They clog up the back end. And at the end of the day, there's just nowhere for the offense to go with the ball. He'll take a shot here for the end zone. And that is incomplete. They took the end zone shot of the final play. It's a heartbreaking finish, and this one will come to an end. So it's a win for the men in blue. The Giants get it done. It was a game played in a driving rainstorm, but they would not let the field or the conditions deter them in any way. They're going to come away from here with a well-earned victory. So that'll just about do it for Greg Olson and our entire team. I'm Mike Tirico. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Giants are winners, as we say, so long from MetLife Stadium.